up YouTube, Saquon here. Today I'm going to be building a DIY custom algae scrubber. And um, after I do the install and the build today, I'll kind of walk you through my build and then uh, over the next couple weeks I'll do another video and kind of chronicle the results I get with it, if any. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of my algae first. I don't know if you can see that right there, but right next to that torch coral, there we go. All that fuzz is all green hair algae. And you can see that it's pretty much everywhere. I've also got this crazy plating algae. It looks like wafers, kind of like the stuff you see growing on trees. And just a lot of algae, and I don't know if you can catch that, but coming off of my return there. Nice green hair algae, maybe some Bipropsis, I think that's how you say it. Some more green hair algae everywhere. And even down here in my sump, you can see... It's not a good picture, the water's really disturbed, but... You can see growing on the uh, overflow there, or the, uh, I guess it's a weird. You can really see that the green hair algae is, is accumulating rather nicely. It's actually starting to stick to my chato. And I've ordered a new skimmer. Right now I'm running the Reef Octopus. I think it's the MB110. Because I built my sump to fit that skimmer, there's only one other skimmer that I can buy that's a little bit bigger. It's the RLSS6i. And uh, that's the only other one that's bigger that'll fit. So this skimmer was rated up to 100, uh, 100 gallons. And I'm running 75 of the 29 gallon sump. Half the sump's full of water, so you figure about 90 gallons. Um, so I've had a significant algae problem for quite some time. The fish can't handle it. The cleanup crew can't handle it. So I'm going to install a algae scrubber. So here's everything I need. All told, I spent about $50. Um, I just went ahead and got this cheap little maxi jet. That was the most expensive thing from my local fish store or PetSmart, I think it was. It was about $40. Uh, three two-foot pieces of three-quarter inch PVC. And then this black plastic tubing right here is for irrigation. And what that's going to do I'm going to cut a small piece of that, fit it onto this nipple here, then this adapter screws on there, then this converts it to the three quarter inch PVC pipe. So that's just about everything that I'm going to need. I'll walk you through the build step by step and we'll go ahead and get started. The screen, I'm going to have to scuff it up really good, came from Hobby Lobby, it was $1.75 I believe. And it is called plastic canvas. I got a 12 by 18 sheet. Everything I read says you need to have one inch by one inch per gallon. So I'm looking at about 10 inches by seven inches deep. And uh, we'll go from there. So the first thing I did was cut all my fittings. And actually, first thing I did was measure everything. And then after I measured it, I went ahead and cut the PVC pipe to length, taking into account this extension. <clears throat> and uh, then I dry fitted everything and made sure that it all worked. So I ran a slit down this pipe here. I just used my radial arm saw. You can use a Dremel if you have one or whatever you can to get through that thing. So this is going to be the length of my algae scrubber screen, which is right here. And I've already cut that to length as well. And it will slip right in there like that and we'll hang down and the water will run out it. I'm going to put some <clears throat> little zip ties in each every two or three inches to hold this in place and then I'll cap the end. Should be good to go. So the last step in this process is to roughen up your scrubbing screen. So there's several different ways I tried to do this. Um, I used a wire wheel on my drill. I tried some sandpaper. I tried rubbing it on the concrete and the best result I got, and this is important because I'm told that a good rough scratchy screen is what will make or break your algae scrubber. I dropped it on the ground, I put my foot on it, 
and I just did a half a turn in each section. And that seemed to rough it up pretty good. I used the concrete on the driveway because it's a little more abrasive. And I just went all the way around like that. So the last thing you do is put the zip ties in your screen there and cut those off. And then that will slide right in there into the slot. We'll cap the end, plug everything in, dry fit everything. See and there you have it. One algae scrubber. Seems to be working a little pretty good. I think I might have to make some adjustments to get the flow more evenly dispersed along the grid there. Maybe it's just dry. Once it gets some moisture on it, it'll get going how I want it to. Fairly simple project. Took me about an hour. Most expensive piece was that pump down there. I got the Maxi Jet 1200 with between two and three hundred gallons per hour. Uh, based on the math I did, that's about what I'd need need to be running through here to get a good algae scrub. So what I'll do now is go ahead and chronicle the effects that this has on the tank itself. And uh, probably in about a week or two, I'll post another update and hopefully we've got some significantly reduced algae. Uh, thanks for watching, and like always, if there's anything you see me doing wrong or anything I could be doing better, please don't hesitate to let me know. Please comment and subscribe.